So basically, before I jump into RVNS, um, I'd like to just give some context in terms of what we'll be showing today. So this is Windshield PLM, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, essentially a tool used to manage um, all your content, whether it's you know CAD data, documentation, um, you're basically using it to design and mature your, you know, your concepts into um, some sort of physical product. So what I have here is the Polaris Snowmobile um, data set. So this is a partnership between PTC and Polaris. And um, as you can see, this is what's called an overloaded bomb. Um, really all that means is I've got multiple components overlaid on one another. And the ability or what this gives me the ability to do is essentially switch it out or configure it to show a specific variant or configuration based on a customer need, um, my entire you know, design process where I have uh, different models within my, um, within my suite. So you can see here, I've essentially switched it out for a specific configuration. It's gonna go ahead and update the bomb. Um, for the sake of today's demo, we really want to just make note of the entire structure. Um, understand that uh, if I was to go ahead and design this, what would be the you know the customer input? What would they require out of a snowmobile? Um, what might the requirements look like? And how I would come from you know the RVNS initial conceptualized stage um, to a finished product as shown. So what I'm doing now is jumping over into the desktop application for Windshield RVNS. So what you'll see is a variety of different context sensitive menus. Um, so all of which mean they will update depending on the view set. And we'll talk a bit more about this later on in the demonstration. Um, so what I have here is a bunch of different tabs. So you can easily cycle through depending on what you're looking at. And this is gonna update and populate the information on your screen. The other thing to note is uh, we have queries. So this is a good place to start inside of RVNS. Um, you have some out of the box and essentially what you have is the ability to search for a specific use case, scenario, um, some sort of documentation, as you can see. So we have things like, you know, all customer input documents. We have, you know, all items, uh, essentially a global search. Uh, as you normally would, either on your local machine, um, on some sort of um, package that you're using uh, to filter or pull out specific information. So I've already run one of these queries and uh, essentially I'm looking for all the documents inside of my RVNS environment. So the first thing to note is, you know, we have an extensive list. Um, it will be dependent on the different document domains you have within your system. Um, so when I say document domains, I really mean uh, the types of documents that you can create. So a document domain will specify how each document um, traces to one another. So you'll have the, the notion of upstream and downstream as well as peer-to-peer -peer traces, uh, which essentially dictate how a requirement um, either satisfies or fulfills um, or has some sort of downstream or upstream component, okay? So each of these document domains are shown, so it's all color coded, makes it very easy to highlight and understand what I'm actually looking at. And we can then you know, sort, filter, um, and do a number of different things to make it easier to navigate around. So over on the left-hand side, we have the project filter, and this allows me to essentially jump between different projects. So you can imagine, you know, the more data we put into the system, the more information that's there, um, it might be harder to navigate. And there's tools within RVNS to help you, you know, bounce around, make sure that you're looking at the right information uh, and you're not getting overwhelmed with the amount of content that's in there. And once again, we can go through, we can provide or perform searches um, to further restrict that data. So all these columns are all configurable. So the ability to go in, uh, essentially define additional columns that maybe make more sense to a user um, to you know, better understand what they're actually looking for um, and allow them to select the right uh, documentation. Okay, so what I'll do is we'll open it up, we'll have a look at uh, the document itself and how we might manage and use this data inside of RVNS. So what first thing you can see is we have uh, essentially like a, an, 
a table, a tabulated form, and we have the ability to go in and essentially modify that content. So we can use you know, a number of different formatting techniques to update the size, um, color, um, text, um, the list goes on. We can also categorize this. So depending on the document, depending on the information that you wanna store or how you wanna classify it within these documents, you can essentially go out and um, select the corresponding uh, category from there. Okay. Um, the other thing to note is you have you know, these columns, um, more importantly, the trace status. And this allows you to understand, well, for this specific requirement, um, what is it dependent on or what is it gonna influence? Um, so we can see there's a downstream trace and I'll highlight that a little later on uh, when we actually go and create some of these traces. The other thing to note is we can once again configure these columns, but we can also use the column context to switch between different authoring states. So as you can imagine, there may be different roles, different individuals who have different preferences on what information they wanna see, um, depending on the task they're actually undertaking. Um, so once again, we can filter these views to show exactly uh, what information is needed um, so we're not overwhelmed with you know, additional columns that may be redundant to us. Okay, and once again, we can easily restructure this document. So you can see, I can just drag and drop uh, depending on what I wanna do to move it. We can also go and copy and paste. So uh, I might have you know, a document and I wanna re reuse some of this content, whether it's a heading, it's some sort of um, you know, dot points. Um, block of text, I can go ahead and create that. We can also go in and, for argument's sake, we'll go and create this. And we can go and indent to create subsections. So once again, all drag and drop, we can easily restructure it without having to, you know, in Excel, highlight the cells, format, merge, do a lot of manual processing in order to just move a requirement up or down. Um, you'll also see that the sections get updated. So irrespective of where you're moving it, everything will get reshuffled along so that you have a nice sequential order. So I'll just go ahead and remove that. And what I'll do is we'll open up another document and see well, how we might create some of these traces. So you have the ability to essentially go in and restructure your view. Uh, so for those of you that are using, you know, the ultra wide monitors, you can have these stacked horizontally, um, plenty of real estate for you to go and uh, do all your traces and drag and drop functionality. Okay. So this requirements document has been set up to essentially have uh, our customer inputs. The requirements document has some requirements that we need to fulfill um, that are stemming from our initial stakeholder requirements. So at this point in time, it's really just a matter of grabbing that requirement, dragging it across to create uh, these additional links. Just resize that. Um, so we can see that we have now a downstream link uh, indicating that this uh, customer or stakeholder documentation is now influencing this requirements document. And likewise, we have the appropriate upstream link. So we can do that again. And I really, the benefit of doing such a thing is when we go back into it and we modify these values uh, or we modify the content in some shape or form, we'll immediately see that our trace status gets updated. And what this means is something has changed um, prior or well, before, uh, this, well, after this trace has been created to essentially indicate to the user that you need to go back um, you need to go and look at this requirements uh, and make sure that whatever it's being influenced by um, hasn't deferred too much that you need to you know, reword it, uh, make any necessary change to it. Um, so you'll get that visual feedback. Uh, you can also go in to the item view itself, um, understand well, what's the trace status, look at you know, associative documentation, uh, in this case, it's saying an upstream trace, there is also an additional sort of distinction um, saying it's been decomposed from that initial customer input. Um, so like you would imagine, depending on whether or not 
uh, you have specific document domains, you have different distinctions on um, how that trace has actually been created. Okay. So if I go back into my document view, I also have additional functionality that I can uh, create and use. So in some instances, people want to export out uh, documentation that shows uh, essentially how my document is interacting uh, with uh, other document domains. In this case, we might wanna see, well, firstly, if I have my customer input um, or if I have my requirements document, where are these traces coming from or going to? So in this case, we can see, well, these two requirements are being fulfilled upstream using the customer input. Uh, this requirement itself is also fulfilling this test requirement. So uh, we're only creating this test in order to basically validate this requirement, um, give it the check, say it's okay. Um, we can see that relationship all straight out of the box uh, within um, RVNS, okay? Um, the documents themselves can also be created, you know, from a template um, whereby we're essentially using or reusing um, existing content in the system. So you can imagine uh, if you have a specific structure in terms of your heading, um, your color schemes, your formatting, you can create a bunch of templates for users to then use uh, later on down the line. We can also create things like baselines to take a snapshot of our information at some point in time. So this is good for you know, design reviews, um, some sort of uh, product delivery. You imagine if you have a package that you're sending out to a client, you might wanna take a snapshot of that at a specific point in time. So you can then go and view these documents um, at any date. Um, you can also have a few other distinctions depending on the revision, um, branching edit dates, um, and most importantly, those baselines. Um, so a good way of storing information within the system but making sure that you can refer back to uh, that instance at any point in time. Okay, um, the, another useful or handy tool is the view differences. So this essentially will take uh, some sort of document and we can basically choose to uh, refer back to you know, a previous build of it. So in this case, I'm gonna use an edit that I've had at some previous point in time. And what we can see is we can see all the different changes that have happened between the documents. Uh, we can easily jump to using the, I guess the UI in the top left-hand corner. So we can see, you know, where requirements have been removed, they have been reworded um, to suit, you know, a more refined need. Um, we can also scroll between the two. So it uh, makes it very easy to highlight, you know, what has changed in this document um, or, you know, what, what the differences are basically. Um, the other thing to note is we have the ability to branch out so we can take an existing document and we can essentially use it as um, a starting point to create new documentation. So you might have worked something up to a specific point in time. You've taken this um, and essentially branched from that to create maybe another path. So you can imagine this like a flowchart. Um, this is all the various paths that you might take from some sort of existing parent document. We can also have the ability to edit our documents in Word. Um, so, you know, if you are using Excel and Word um, to manage those documents, then you can use tools like the import export wizard um, or the out of the box functionality to edit that source content um, in those, you know, familiar interfaces and then have that populate RVNS. Okay. Um, so I talked, previously about uh, essentially the view sets. So we have authoring documents and test engineer. So what this means is we can essentially customize the view to show different information uh, within our RVNS environment. So we have firstly updated tabs, um, updated headers, um, menus, uh, essentially catering to that specific role. So as you would imagine, an author needs a different interface, uh, different functionality compared to a test engineer. So as my test engineer, I might be looking at, um, you know, all the different test sessions, uh, test objectives that are within my system. So, you know, how I'm fulfilling them, uh, what tests need to be run. 
I can basically jump to those, highlight some sort of component or some sort of document, and I can look at all the associated metadata and attributes. Um, I can jump to any additional documentation if I need. I can also see things like the workflow and history. So this is gonna give me more information to tell me exactly where this document is, um, at what life cycle. We can also look at things like uh, the priority. So if we are um, you know, managing quite a, quite a lot of documents within our system, uh, then we can make sure that our resources are getting allocated to you know, things that are critical or of high concern um, and essentially need uh, focus at that point in time. So the test sessions themselves will basically be used to fulfill, uh, I guess, a wide variety of here. Um, so test results. So we're basically using our test session to define um, all the test cases that we've defined and then using that to basically input and log data in the system. So we can go in and we can use the results editor to essentially uh, carry out this test. So this is the manual process whereby we'll go in, we'll understand, well, what is the system test? You know, give us some information, some context, uh, and then we can basically run that test, determine whether or not it has passed or failed. And then from that, we can log that in the system. So additional things such as you know, attachments and related items, whether it's defects can also be included, uh, allows you to have an overall better scope and understanding of, you know, what's actually being run, what's happened uh, within the system. Okay. Um, if we jump over to the dashboard itself, these are, you know, configurable depending on the user. We can go in, we can understand, well, what do we want to show? Uh, what do we want to see? Um, basically providing you with additional metrics and uh, information, okay? So at some point in time, I might wanna generate a report on this. Um, in this case, I'm looking for my test coverage, uh, essentially showing all the different documents um, and whether or not I have an appropriate test and whether or not that test has been you know, passed or carried out. So you have you know, a wide variety of tools um, and a lot of, uh, I guess, content that you can kind of sift through uh, allow you to better understand what's happening uh, within your system. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll jump over into the web interface and we'll see how uh, we can interact with this space. Okay, so as you can see, we have you know a slightly different layout, essentially giving you you know the same sort of functionality, um, but it's pitched at essentially people that um, don't need the full functionality of the desktop client. So we still have the ability to go ahead and create documentation, as you can imagine. Um, so we still have those different document domains. If we want to create some sort of uh, test document, assign it to a specific project, then we have that ability. Uh, we just have a slightly different way of going about it. So in this case, okay, and then from there, we can simply save that, create our document, and then once again, go ahead and uh, edit it within uh, within the system, okay? We can also add things like tables. So these are, think of these as your queries. So we're gonna go look at, you know, all the same information we normally would inside of the desktop client, um, just through this revised UI. Okay, so at any point in time, we can use the hyperlinks and that information to jump to a specific item. Uh, we can read out things like the test results. We can look at the workflows, um, any sort of history and revised changes. Um, and then go through and make any sort of edits uh, th that are necessary. Uh, within these tables, they're all configurable. So we can essentially you know, update those columns. Um, we can also filter out unwanted information as you normally would think, allowing you to go in, um, select the corresponding documentation, 
we can also look at project filters. So once again, you know, filter out, limit that amount of information that we're seeing. So we can see that new test protocol document that I've created. Um, likewise, we can also jump into Doc Studio that allows us to you know, query and um, essentially make any sort of modification uh, like we normally would inside of this system. So if we were to edit, uh, simply just define, you know, where in our system we want to modify. We can, you know, delete, move, copy, rearrange using the draggers. Um, we can also insert content. So you can see that at a new line, it's going to reshuffle all the numbers. Um, once again, we can go in. It's spell. Add that. Um, we can also add our content. And just like that, we can go ahead and you know, create that information uh, within our system. So the real power of this is to understand that this is you know, full collaboration. So multiple users going through editing that information and having the system update and populate that uh, in real time. So if we click on you know, specific items, we can see you know, the trace status. So we can see similar to before um, where that information is coming from, where it's going to. We also have the ability to integrate into our windshield system itself, okay? So what I'll do now is I'll jump over into my windshield PLM environment, and we'll have a look at how we can come full circle and essentially go ahead and create uh, that last bit of the trace functionality. Okay, so what you'll notice is you, you might have a trace depending on you know, licensing and packaging. Um, and what this means is we're gonna modify the WT part to essentially go in and link up that source requirement. Okay. So from that, we can choose, you know, which server that we're actually connecting to, the type of requirement, where it's single or multiple, and uh, the type itself. So if we are early on in the development process, uh, and we want to allocate it, um, or we want to satisfy a specific requirement. Okay, so then we have the ability to choose um, some additional um, configurations, and we can do a search within the system to essentially pull out uh, that requirement. Okay, so these are coming from the documentation that we've created. Um, if you were to, you know, add a new line item, um, then that information would also be stored in here. Okay, so just like that, we've now gone ahead, created that trace link. Um, we can essentially hover over to see uh, additional details you know, about that, um, as well as jump to that UI um, and that specific requirement itself. 